In this video, we're going to complete example three. It says, what is the maximum flow for the directed graph at right? And we're going to use the maximum flow minimum cut theorem to find the maximum flow. So the first thing we need to do is make some cuts. Now, in order to make some cuts, we need to know where the source is and where the sink is. And this is my fault. I should have written down where they were. So A is our source and G is our sink. So let's make just one cut in red, just a real random cut like so. And I can see that this cut in red separates the source from the sink. What is the cut capacity of this cut? Well, we're just going to add up our weighted edges. 25 plus 10 is 35 plus 15 is 50. So we have a cut capacity of 50. Uh, let's make another random cut. I think I'll make one near the end, close to the sink. And this green cut definitely cuts off the source from the sink and when we add up our weighted edges 35 plus 25 is 60 plus 30 is 90. So we're looking for the smallest cut capacity so so far our red line our red cut here is the best one. So how are we going to figure out where the best cut is, the cut with the smallest cut capacity. Well, I'm just going to look at my diagram here. I've kind of got some edges running along the top, like so. And I've got some edges running along the bottom. And I've got some edges that I guess are in the, the middle here. So if I look at the edges going along the top here, which edge has the smallest weight. Well, it'd be the one with the 15. So I reckon that my cut is really going to need to pass through that 15 here. So I know it, it needs to pass through the 15. And then if I look at the edges along the bottom, 15, 20, and 30, 15 is my small one here. So I really probably want it to end up going through this 15. So maybe, maybe this would be a better cut, going passing through the 10 and through the 15. So let's add up the weight of these edges. 15 plus 10 is 25, plus 15 is 40. Okay, so that's, that's a bit better, 40. Now, p most people would look at this blue cut and they would think to themselves, yeah, that's, that's the one, that's definitely the smallest cut capacity but that actually be wrong and I kind of did something on purpose to make this diagram tricky so I'm going to show you the best cut that we could make so it still passes through the 15 at top and the 15 at bottom but I'm going to force it to go through the 4 the 5 and also the 30 and some of you might be thinking, why would I make it go through the 30 here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of um, some of our cuts here just to clear some space. I'll leave the one with 40 because that's quite an important cut there. It's, it's not the correct one, but it's almost correct. So let's have a closer look at these edges. Edge from B to C flows in this direction. Notice that it's flowing from the source through the cut towards the sink. The same deal happens with the the other fifteen. It throws, it, sorry, it flows through the source towards the sink. We've got two more edges, the four and the five. They flow towards the sink. What about the edge with a weight of thirty? you'll notice that it flows in a different direction. And you might remember from the previous video that whenever you've got a cut, there are two sides of the cut. So for this purple cut, I've got the sink side 
and the source side. And this edge here flows from the sink side towards the source. And up here we had a little clause in brackets that says we only count edges that flow from the source to the sink, not from the sink towards the source. So when I add up these weighted edges here, I don't add up the 30. So I would go 15 plus 4 is 19 plus 5 is 24. I skip the 30 and add 15 and I actually get 39. So the maximum flow for the directed graph at right is 39. Now it doesn't give us any units to work with here, so we could just leave that as 39. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.